All right, guys. Hi, it's me, Ashley, with my soul on fire. I'm back for part two on that pencil tumbler. And um, this is what I have right now. This has actually been sanded. I didn't show you the sanding on the video because, as I know I've said before, I'm actually allergic to the epoxy. So when I'm sanding, um, I either have to do it in um, all kinds of long sleeves and um, gloves or whatever, or I just hand it off to my husband and he sands it for me, which is what happened this time. Um, it's just a lot easier. Those particles get everywhere and it's very easy um, for them to get on me no matter how well protected I am when I'm sanding. And I just, I completely break out. My eyes swell up and it gets pretty bad. So, um, I had my husband go ahead and sand this for me. It's beautifully smooth now. You can see it does look a little um, dull now, and that's fine. It's a good um, quality, uh, it's good quality poly glitter that I use, so I'm not worried about that shine not coming back. It'll totally come back once we epoxy this again. You'll, you'll see that beautiful shine again, and this is super smooth now. Really, it turned out very smooth. It, there was just a little bit of um, roughness up top here and a little bit of roughness right around the edge, which is pretty typical. Um, so this is all sanded and beautiful. Um, the one thing I am going to do before I move on is I am going to clean out this inner rim. I'm not going to, you know, get too in-depth with it, but I am going to... Um, I am just going to take this bit of epoxy out of it just because I'm about to put another layer of epoxy on it and I don't want a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer. So to do that, and I did, um, I should have just posted a video on how to do this part as well, but I'm going to show you again in this one. I just take my box cutter and I cut, I cut, I um, slide it around the top edge of the cup like this and just remove that very top Ugh, layer. Okay, all the way around and that is good. It's all the way around now. And now I just kind of go in here and I just make like a cut into that bit. And when I do that, it kind of just pulls it up a little bit and I can actually just pull it out now. And it just all came out in one strip. Sometimes I can get it without actually cutting it in half, but um, this was not one of those times. Now, typically, if this were the last coat, I would be, you know, cleaning it up on the inside with my um, nail polish soak, my nail polish remover soak off. Um, but this isn't my last my last coat so I'll do that later. There is also one small little bit of epoxy still like right in here and to get that out all I have to do is just flick it like that and that little chip of epoxy just came out. It's so easy. Um, it comes off so easily on the inside. So my next thing that I am going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to put my decal on. So this one is um, for someone and it is for their son's teacher who is named Miss Melissa and so we are going to add that to the cup. Now what you'll do with your cup is you're going to determine what side you want this cup on. Now my cup actually has, you can barely see it now because I've put so much on it, but it does have like a little emblem on it um, that I've covered up with glitter and it's just barely noticeable. But I always look for that and I try to put the decal on the exact opposite side from that. So what I do to measure that, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. What I do to measure that is I take my lid and I find that piece and I put my lid on and I'll put the hole, the hole, the straw hole I'll line that up directly, like my straw hole is here, so I'm lining it up directly with my emblem here on the back. So now I know that when I turn it around, the exact opposite side is going to be 
the opposite side of my lid, which has this little lip on it. You can see that little lip. So now I know that that is where I want to line up my decal. You can put your decal wherever you want to. Um, this is just how I do mine. So I have my name, and what I'm going to do is I have this piece of um, this piece of transfer paper that I've pulled off. I'm going to lay it on top. You can even use tape. You can use like um, scotch tape for this, and put a couple pieces of scotch tape over it, and and do that. It's I mean I've done it before when I've run out of transfer um, transfer tape or transfer paper. So now that that paper's on top, I'm going to take my little Cricut scraper. You can use a popsicle stick. You can use just about anything with an edge, a ruler, and you just kind of you just don't want to use like the sharp end of a ruler. You don't want anything to be too sharp because you don't want it to scrape and ruin or damage your lettering. So I'm going to push this on here. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of push down on this and attach it all. Like that. And now I'm going to lightly pull this off. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not even showing you. <laughs> I'm going to lightly pull this off. And, uh-oh, that one little S didn't get there. Okay. Uh-oh. A little bit of it stuck. Okay. So, now I have the name. Okay. So now what I kind of do is I kind of jam my little thing underneath there. You can just kind of wedge something in there so that it stays put while you're doing this. I kind of move this so that you can see it a little bit better. And I hope that you can see that pretty well. Okay, and now I'm just going to take this and I just kind of do it by sight here where I want it. Try to make it as straight as I possibly can. And I push it onto the cup really, really well. Okay, and now I just slowly move the transfer tape off. You want to do it slowly because if, if like maybe the dot on the eye or something doesn't stick, you can just lay it back down really quick, repress it, and pull it back off again. <clears throat> but I think that looks actually really nice. Turned out pretty good. So now I am just going to give this a second coat of epoxy. Okay. So now it is time to epoxy the pencil cup. I'm gonna do my second coat of epoxy like I would anything. You always first make sure that every single bit of that vinyl is laying down. If it's not laying down, when you put the epoxy on, it's not ever gonna lay down. Um, so, don't think that, oh, well, it's sticking up, but the epoxy should lay that down. It won't. So just keep that in mind. Okay. I've mixed up my epoxy. I don't feel the need to show you that. I've shown you that before. If you want to see how I mix my epoxy, a good representation of that would be to watch my, um, my glitter swirl video. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I've got it on my spinner now. I'm just going to slowly do strip by strip and epoxy it. And again, I take it all the way up to the top and I push my epoxy over the edge to get a really good seal, especially on this one. Um, this cup is one that I've used Mod Podge with. So you're going to have an open edge. Unlike um, you know, if I don't seal it with epoxy up here, it's going to be an open edge 
Whereas like the ones where I'm like putting the epoxy on it and then um, putting the glitter in it, it's more of one concrete um, layer. With this kind of a cup, it's a layer on top of a layer. So it's a little bit different. So I always, I, I always just feel like it's best to pop it over the edge there. I don't know if it's necessary, maybe it's not, but I feel more comfortable doing it that way. I feel like it gives it like that extra little bit of a seal. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Got the bottom. There's not very many bubbles in this at all actually. It's really turned out pretty good. The time that you can really usually see the bubbles is when you look at the vinyl. And in this instance, it's looking pretty good. They're very minimal. Um, so what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to take my gloves off and I'm going to grab my heat gun, my Craftsman heat gun, and I'm going to put it on medium. Let it heat up for a second. Pieces of glitter stuck to me. Okay. And now I'm just going to up and down, up and down, not too fast, but not too slow. You don't want to really like stop in any one place because you could end up burning your epoxy and then you're just, it's, it's very hard to come back from that. <laughs> so just up and down, up and down. I usually do this twice up and down. And then the next time the um, vinyl comes around, I'm going to get the bottom too really quick. And then the next time the vinyl comes around, I'm just going to give that vinyl one last little zhuzh if there's any place in it that needs it. Oh wow, this one actually turned out really well. I'm just going to give it a quick zhuzh, but I don't know that it even really needs it. It's looking really nice. Another thing with this, it kind of smooths it out. It's not just about the bubbles. It's about kind of smoothing it out a little bit. Um, you're a lot less likely to get that wavy um, effect going on your um, in your epoxy when you do it this way. It, it becomes a much more smooth application. Okay, I think we're good there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this spin now. Um, I may, after like an hour, hour and a half or so, put the infrared heater on it. Um, it gets a little chilly down here because I do um, all of my cup making in the basement. So it can get chilly from time to time. So I may put that infrared heater on it. I'm not positive yet. I may just let it go through the night without it and then see if it needs it tomorrow. Um, the thing is you never want to put the heater on it, at least I don't put it on it right away. I feel like it heats it up a little bit too much and then you end up with big drips coming off of you, instead of it helping it cure. You're just melting sort of the epoxy off of it and that's not good. You don't want that either. Um, so I usually just use it as an aid to kind of help keep it a little bit warm once the epoxy's had a little bit of, of time to set up a little bit first. 